Here's T-Bone and Heather on Star 98.3 and 97.7 The Bay. Same minutes after 8 o'clock, 8.08. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the show. And uh, welcoming to the show is uh, Dr. Stephanie Dubullis. Uh, doctor, good morning. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you for having me on the program. Oh, well. we're so happy to have you, Stephanie. Hey, I got to ask you, what time do you usually start your day? Or are you like a shift worker? Who knows with emergency work, right? Uh, what are your hours like? Uh, well, it varies. Uh, I get up pretty early in the morning. And usually my day starts with emails around 5, 30, 6 a.m. And mm-hmm. then I have a shift. Shifts can vary from 7 a.m., sometimes they're afternoon, and even sometimes they're overnight. We're 24-7. So right. Depends on, how many, uh, depends on how many idiots like myself fall off a ladder, right? <laughs> that is true. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, Thank you for agreeing, <laughs> Stephanie. Yeah, right. uh, so let me just get everybody up to speed here. Uh, Dr. DeBolis is the Chair of Emergency Medicine and Medical Director of Stroke at Calvert Health Medical Center. And uh, so let's talk a little bit about life in the ER in a pandemic. How crazy is that? Well, you know, I never expected that this would come, uh, but it's been it's been challenging. Uh, it's very uh, interesting, and I think that um, we're learning a lot. We're doing some good work. The medicine hasn't changed, right? The medicine's the same. It's just so much of the other things that are involved in it. But okay. I think that we're learning every day about it, and we feel really comfortable in the ER taking care of folks now. So don't delay. If you feel like you're sick, we want you to come into the emergency department. We want to see you. Okay. Now, is that something you're facing, Stephanie, especially someone who deals with stroke patients all the time? Do you see patients holding off, not coming to the emergency room for whatever reason, because they think they can walk it off or they're afraid to get COVID? I mean, are you seeing that from some patients? Absolutely. I think that uh, we're seeing a trend where people are waiting at home. They're waiting. They think their facial droop will get better. They think that mm. that arm numbness and tingling is going to improve. A lot of people are scared. They they want to come in, uh, but they think that we're over, you know, run with COVID patients or they're going to get COVID. Or honestly, some of them are even altruistic and think, gosh, other people are sicker than I am. And maybe this will just get better. Right. So. That is, you know, that is really why I'm here. I really think that, especially with stroke, there is a time-sensitive medication oh, yeah. Yeah, to yeah. give people. And so time is brain. So, uh, and especially with stroke, the magic shot. Now, my father had a stroke, and um, <laughs> it was the magic shot. And unfortunately, he lived in a very rural community, couldn't get him the shot until five, six, seven hours later. And it absolutely affected him because somebody else I know had a stroke, same area, around the same time. They got the shot. It is incredible just the change in the stroke patient if you can get them to the hospital ASAP. Yes, ASAP, time medicine, time sensitive medicine called PPA. And uh, it really just, we call it, you know, late man's term, it's a clot buster. Mm-hmm. And so, but it's time sensitive. You have to get it within four and a half hours of the onset of your symptoms. Right. And if you don't get it, at that time, then maybe it won't work as well like it was the experience maybe with your dad. Right. Or it can be almost a miracle drug where people with speech deficits, which, of course, that's devastating, will start to talk in the emergency department. It's, it's wonderful. But if you get it too late, then the risk of bleeding kind of outweighs the good that it can do. Right. So it's really just call 911 if you have any symptoms that are concerning for stroke because the treatment starts with EMS. They alert the emergency department. Right. They let us know exactly when your symptoms started. We're ready for you. We have radiology ready for you. So really, truly, you know, don't drive yourself in. Don't have a family member drive you in. Call 911 because we are alerted that you're coming. And and at that point, I mean, you guys are, it's, it's all Katie hands by on the deck. door. Yeah. You're getting ready to roll and things are happening. So I guess the message, the overwhelming message is, uh, if you're if you're not feeling right, you don't you don't put it off. I mean, everybody knows themselves and they know, but 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 don't put it off. Go to the ER and get some help because that's what it's for. Absolutely, and I think that the American Health Association 
has a nice acronym called FAST, F-A-S-T, that everybody can remember. Even I can remember that, and I'm terrible with acronyms. <laughs> but it is, F is face drooping. Does your family member's face not look right? Right. I mean, don't answer that question. Yeah, right. But <laughs> do they have arm weakness? Have them put their hands out. Does one fall down? Do they have difficulty speaking? Do the words not make sense? Do mm-hmm. they not understand you? And then T is just time. Time. Reminder, call 911. If the person shows any of these symptoms, call 911 immediately. And we were there when Dad had his stroke, and I. they always say, ask them what year it is. You know, mm-hmm. ask them, do they know who the president is? And he didn't. He didn't know the year. Yeah. He didn't know the president. And he, he actually looked at my mom. And he said to her, whose arm is this? And she knew and she knew immediately something was wrong. But he looked at her and said, whose arm is this? And he's looking at his own arm. Yeah. Stroke is something you absolutely do not want to mess with. And you want to get help as as soon as you can, which is so great. The Calvert Health Medical Center and all of our area hospitals are there. Now, let me ask you quick, Stephanie, about um, COVID. How, sure. well, what is the bed situation at, because um, I know that Southern Maryland is seeing an increase in COVID cases. Are you seeing that in the emergency room at Calvert Health Medical Center? Unfortunately, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but fortunately, the county is pretty good with the vaccination rate. I mean, not great. We, got, we have to be better. But I think the cases that I'm seeing now are different than the cases I'm, I was seeing 18 months ago. Let me ask you a question because I, yeah. I, I, I get this stuff all the time and it is, um, I, it's mind boggling to me, but I'll just, I'll just relay it to you and you can deal with it. Um, <laughs> good luck. Stephanie. Yeah, good luck with that. Um, <laughs> so here's, here's what, here's what I hear people say. Well, I talked to my doctor now, first of all, there's no chance that it's a real doctor. Okay, but but okay, whatever. They talk to their... their, A shaman. I'm doing air quotes now. They talk to their doctor, (laughs) and they said uh, said I shouldn't get the vaccine. Have you in your life, walking through the halls of medicine, bumped into anybody who's like, yeah, I'm not sure about this vaccine thing? No, I have not. Okay, why would... We had a caller this morning, and she said that her doctor said she shouldn't get the vaccine because she is more susceptible to harsh side effects. Well, I think that there are some individuals maybe that have either had a reaction to it or are maybe potentially too immunosuppressed. But I think those cases are so rare. And even if you ask oncologists where you're going to see these really immunosuppressed patients, they're still going to tell you that you're probably better off getting the vaccine. Absolutely. Uh, Listen, I can't, and this does nothing for you, but I can't thank you enough for everybody, yourself and your staff, and everybody who's at these emergency rooms all across the region who have mm-hmm. just done amazing work uh, day in and day out through this pandemic, trying to keep us on the right side of the dirt. And that it's an uphill climb when people won't listen to the doctors. <laughs> I know, I know, I, but I'm hopeful. I'm very hopeful. And so are we. Uh, Dr. Stephanie uh, DeBoulis, thank you so much for taking time out of what is a very busy day and starts very early. We thank you so much, and we'd love to have you on again if you have an opportunity. We'd love to talk about uh, emergency medicine and hoping people get uh, to the hospital safely and they get treated. We'd love to have you on again. Absolutely. Anytime. Please feel free to reach out to me. Thank we will so indeed. Much. Thanks. Thank you so much. Hey, Stephanie. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Stephanie, yeah. I have a mark right here on my neck. Is that a rash? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you get jokes. <laughs> Stephanie just, gets jokes. Just send me a text message. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, send me How a text. How many times does she get yeah. it? Is this a mole? Is this? What oh, do you think this is? Oh, you're a doctor? Is? Listen, I've got this thing. I've got this rash yeah. that won't go away. Yeah. No, Thank you to her. Every party every event they go to every everything everything thank uh, you we appreciate dr stephanie uh DeBoulis for uh calling in today chair and emergency uh chair of emergency medicine and medical director of stroke at calvert health medical right. center the most important thing is especially if you think somebody is having a stroke get to the hospital get covid the hospital. or not i mean it's right it's it's there you know where it is yes of um, course and of course, you know, if you, well, probably best case is, uh, you know, you call uh, an ambulance, but if you're 
going to do it yourself, whatever. But it, whatever, however you get there, get to the ER. Mm-hmm. Don't wait. Tell it, them you're coming with a stroke patient. It'll be, get better. No, no, it won't. 18 minutes after 8 o'clock, 818 phone lines are open for you if you want to give us a call this morning. Well, that would be fantastic. 1-800-782-7983 or, of course, 301-884-4615. That is the number in the studio. That'll get you on the air with us. Hi, and good morning. You're on with T-Bone and Heather. Hey, good morning, folks. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning. I was listening to uh, to, to uh, Stephanie. I guess that's who it is. Yes. It, uh, I I told, I'm went through this stroke about uh, mm. about a week before Christmas. Oh my okay. goodness! And I completely ignored all the warnings. Oh no! Uh, okay. I work at a hospital in Arlington. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, um, and I kept on my fingers were getting you know locked up and everything. Yeah. Completely. You know, it's like. It, I almost walked down to the ED, you know, and, you know, it's, it's right down the hallway. And right. I didn't. And, and I what, and what stopped you? Is it, is, was it just the overwhelming thought of, oh, I'm just I'm tired. Overreacting. It's, it's not that big a deal. What, what kept you from doing what on Arrogant. some level you, er, arrogance, boy, you thought you could work, walk it off. I think kay. that too. That now, okay, a, uh, but how are you today? How you finally I'm went? The fact is I went to the outpatient rehab at Calvert. The first of February, uh, I got this start. All this happened about a week before Christmas. Oh my gosh! Um, and I drove myself from Golden Beach to Arlington, where, where I work at sure. the hospital. Sure, right. And while uh, having a stroke. Work. Yeah, you know, it's like uh, big time <laughs> So I think, ah, oh, let me put the slip. Yeah. On. Oh my gosh! Uh, so long story short is, I get to work, and it's like I was really tired, and it's like I'm going to go to Seven Eleven. Uh, I didn't make it from uh, uh, to the 7-Eleven. I kept hitting cars. Oh, oh my boy. God! Oh, oh my God! Thank God! Thank God they were parked. Right. And uh, the policeman came up. He says uh, he wanted to check me for drunk driving. I said I I am not drunk. Yeah. And as soon as I got to ED, and I knew the nurse, and she said he ain't drunk. He's this man was having a stroke. Oh my gosh! And are you good now? I mean, are you better at least oh, yeah. now? I'm, I'm great. I'm good, great, except for the uh, left index finger. Other than that, I'm fine. Good. Well, that's fantastic, well it ends man. well. I'm but, glad it know, worked I'm out for you. Really blessed on that, but it was it was the come to Jesus moment. <laughs> you know, you can't walk up. it off. Yep. Wake right, up, buddy. Thanks Thank you call. so you know, much. You know, the arrogance, it, you know, was there. Yeah. And it, so this this definitely was a lifesaver for me. Good, Thanks, good. Buddy. I'm Thanks so glad to hear it. Thank, Thank you, you so yep. much. Thanks for the call. Um, <sighs> arrogance. What arrogance. A gr- what a great word and bold to use it. That was arrogance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because well. I think that too. I just walk it off. Shortness of breath or something. You know, you don't think about it. That you're having a stroke or a heart attack. <laughs> well, it it registers and then you quickly dismiss it. Right. And you're Maybe like, I'm having a heart attack. No, I'm not. I'm not nah, having a what the shut up, dumb dumb. Well, maybe you maybe. should go. Maybe. Southern-